Hello and uh, welcome to today's session. Today we're looking at management of patients with oral disorders. Um, in completion of this tutorial, we expect the learner to be able to use the nursing process as a framework for care for patients with conditions of the, uh, affecting the oral cavity. We want you to be able to describe the relationship between dental hygiene and uh, dental problems to nutrition. Describe the nursing management of patients with abnormalities of the lips, gums, uh, teeth, mouth, and salivary glands. Use the nursing process as a framework for care of patients with cancer of the oral cavity. And lastly, be able to state the physical, psychosocial, long-term needs of patients with oral cancer. So the oral cavity is also referred to as the mouth and it's a crucial part of the human anatomy responsible for various functions such as eating, speaking and initiating the process of digestion. We find that the oral cavity is divided in several into several components that make up the oral cavity starting with number one, the oral mucosa. This is normally the inner lining of the oral cavity and is covered by the moist stratified squamous epithelium, which we normally refer to it as the oral mucosa. It includes the lining of the lips, the cheeks, the flow of the mouth, the hard palate, soft palate, and the surface of the tongue. The teeth is the second component and uh, human have different types of teeth, including the incisors, the canines, the premolars, and the molars. Teeth are usually responsible for chewing and breaking down food into smaller particles, making it easier for digestion. Salivary glands are the next, and we have three pairs of salivary glands in the oral cavity, starting with the most abundant one, which is the parotid glands. These ones are located near the ears, okay? Near the ears, Submandibular, these are glands located under the jaw. Submandibular, all right, submandibular here. And then sublingual will be found below, below the tongue, lingual, okay? These glands normally produce saliva which contains enzymes that normally start the process of digestion. The tongue is the fourth one and the tongue is a muscular organ located on the floor of the oral cavity. It, is a, it plays a crucial role in taste sensation, swallowing, and uh, speech. You find that the surface of the tongue contains taste buds, which detect different flavors, sweet, salt, salty, sour, bitter, or umay. The fifth one is the palate, okay? The palate, and the palate forms the roof of the oral cavity, okay? Okay. Remember, we have the hard palate, which is found in the front and it, uh, it's bony, and the soft palate at the back, which is muscular. The palate separates the oral cavity from the nasal cavity and also helps in swallowing by preventing food from entering the nasal passages. The uvula is number six, and uh, the uvula is a small flesh structure hanging down from the soft palate in the back of the mouth, okay? Okay, so it plays a role in speech articulations and prevents food and, and uh, liquid from entering the nasal cavity during swallowing, while the tonsils um, are clusters of lymphoid tissues located in both sides of the throat, like you can see for my case here, um, showing you the palatine tonsils. They are part of the immune systems and they do help fight infections by trapping bacteria and viruses that normally enter the oral cavity. Pharynx is our last part of this um, anatomy and uh, the oral cavity connects the pharynx. This is a muscular tube that serves as a passage for both air and food. The pharynx is divided into three parts. We have the nasopharynx, which is behind the nose. We have the oropharynx behind the mouth and the lingopharynx, this which is above the larynx. It plays a role in swallowing, okay? So we have these conditions that normally affect the lips of the mouth. We could have ectic chelitis, herpes simplex one, uh, chancre, 
conduct dermatitis, leukoplakia, hairy leukoplakia, and lichen, uh, lichen planus. So like the lichen planus, this is characterized by the white papules, serrated and painful, and uh, the causes could be the chronic inflammatory condition um, where the cause is unknown. You need to administer corticosteroids systematically or intralesionally as prescribed, then provide the comfort measures. Leukoplakia is also characterized by white patches and may be hyperkeratotic. Uh, this is the precancerous form and often in the buccal mucosa and is usually painless. You need to instruct the patient to see the physician if uh, it persists longer than two weeks and eliminate risk factors like the tobacco use. We have the herpes simplex one, which we uh, the patient will be having painful vesicles, which may rupture, and uh, the cause is the human uh, the, the herpes simplex one virus, and uh, it's contagious. You need to use the antiviral medications as prescribed, administer analgesics, instruct the patient on avoiding irritating foods, and provide comfort measures. We also have conditions that affect the mouth like leukoplakia, hairy leukoplakia, lichen, planus, the candidiasis, and apotomitis. Uh, this one you need to com provide comfort measures, saline rinses, soft diet, and administer antibiotics or corticosteroids if necessary for that matter. For the gums, you could have gingivitis, you could have necrotizing uh, gingivitis, hepatic glivostomitis, and the periodontitis, okay? The periodontitis, you need to teach the patient oral hygiene and then instruct to consult a dentist, okay? Correct. So we have these disorders that affect the teeth and, uh, for example, the dental plaques and carriers. So tooth decay is, in a, is an erosive process that begins with the process of bacteria on fermentable carbohydrates in the mouth, which normally produces acids that do dissolve to uh, enamel. So the extent of damage for the teeth depends on the following, whether the presence of plaque, the strength of the acids and the ability of the saliva to neutralize them, the length of time the acids are in contact with the teeth, and the more susceptible the teeth are to the decay. So find that plaque is, this is just a, a glue gelatin like substance that normally adheres to the, to the teeth. Uh, the initial action that causes the damage to the teeth occurs under dental plaque. So dental decay begins with a small hole, usually in a fissure, that's a break in the tooth enamel. And then in an area that is, or in an area that is very hard to clean. So if left unchecked, you find the affected area penetrates the enamel into the dentine. So because the dentine is not as hard as the enamel, tooth decay will progress more rapidly and in time it reaches the pulp. So when the blood supply and lymph vessels and nerves are exposed, they become infected and an abscess may form either or within the tooth or at the tip of the root. So you, the patient could have or experience soreness and pain, uh, usually with this abscess. So as the infection continues, the patient may face may swell and there may be a pulsating pain. So the dentist needs to determine by an X-ray studies the extent of the damage and the type of treatment needed. Treatment for dental carriers will include filling, dental implants, and extractions. If treatment is not successful, the tooth may be need to be e extracted. In general, you find that tooth decay is associated with young people, but older others are subject to decay as well, particularly from those who are drug-induced or age-related dry uh, oral dryness. We could also prevent by um, practicing infecting mouth, mouth care, reducing the intake of starch and, uh, and, and, and sugars, these are refined carbohydrates, applying fluoride to the teeth or drinking fluoridinated water, refraining from smoking, controlling diabetes and using pit and fissure sealants for that matter. You could also work on the diet so that you decrease the amount of sugar and starch and in, in the diet. And uh, uh, for, for patients who snack, they should be uh, encouraged to choose less cardiogenic alternatives such as fruits, vegetables, nuts, cheese, cheese 
and or, or plain yogurt. Fluoridation of public water supplies also has been found to decrease dental carriers. What about disorders affecting the jaw? Okay, so we have abnormal conditions affecting the mandible. Uh, that is what you're referring as the jaw and of, of the temporomandibular joint. TMJ normally connects the mandible to the temporal bone at the side of the head in front of the ear. So they include, uh, these conditions will be including congenital malformations, fractures, congenital dislocation, cancer, sy uh, syndromes characterized by pain and limited motion. Okay, so temporomandibular joints are collectively described, uh, characterized as myofascial pain, which is a discomfort in the muscles controlling jaw functions and the, in the neck and shoulder muscles. Internal derangement of the joint, that's a dislocated jaw, a displaced disc or an injured condyle. Then you have a degenerative joint disease, could be rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis in the jaw joint. Okay, guys, so we have temporal bone, um, mandible, and the temporal mandibular joint is there. Okay, so muscles involved in chewing and speech are also affected for that matter. So on um, the science and symptoms, patients could have pain ranging from dull ache to throbbing, debilitating pain that can radiate to the ears, teeth, neck muscles, and uh, facial sinuses. They often have restricted jaw motion and locking of the jaw, and they may hear clicking or uh, grating noises. Chewing, swallowing, and may be difficult, so depression may occur in response to these symptoms. Diagnosis is usually based on the patient's subjective symptoms of the pain, limitation in range of motion, dysphagia, difficulty in chewing, difficulty in speech, and hearing problems. Magnetic um, MRI and X ray studies and arthrogram may be performed. So patient needs to be educated that stress management may be helpful to reduce grinding and clenching of the teeth. Patient may also benefit from range of motion exercise like uh, jaw opening and closing, resisted jaw openings, jaw side, uh, side to side movement, chin trackings, tongue over roof movements, and other isometric exercises. So pain management will include the use of NSAIDs and possibly addition of opioids, muscle relaxant, and muscle antidepressants. We could have um, a, 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 a bite plate or splint, and uh, this uh, plastic bag is worn over the upper and the lower teeth, and it may be want to protect the teeth from grinding. However, you have to know that this is usually a short-term uh, therapy. Conservative and reverse, uh, reversible treatment is recommended. If irreversible surgical options are recommended and the patient is encouraged to seek a second opinion. Surgical uh, management will involve the corrections of mandibular structure abnormalities, which may require uh, surgery involving reposition or reconstruction of the, of the jaw. Mandibular fractures are usually closed fractures, while else we have the rigid plate fixations, and this one is the current treatment of choice in many cases of mandibular fracture and in some mandibular reconstructive surgery procedures. So bone grafting may be performed to replace structural deformities using these bones from the patient's own ilium ribs or cranial sites. Rib tissue may also be harvested from cadaver dons. Okay, so nursing care <clears throat> is there where you have to look at the nutritional supplements that for this patient and the diet for that one. Next, we have the disorders of the salivary glands. And uh, salivary glands, we have already mentioned the three pairs of salivary glands, starting with the parotid, submandibular, and sublingual. Good, and uh, it's good to know that about 1.2 liters of saliva is normally produced daily, and the gland's main function is for lubrication, protection against harmful bacteria, and digestion. So common condition could include like sialidosis, sialolithias, salivary gland tumors, um, mucosal, 
Sinogren's syndrome, ranular uh, salivary duct stricture, and HIV-related uh, gland uh, disease. So paro, paro, parotitis, this is inflammation on the parotid gland and is the most common inflammatory condition of the salivary glands, although inflammation can occur in any other salivary glands. Like when it occurs in these other ones, we refer to it as CLA, denitis, inflammation of salivary, salivary glands. So we could have mumps in this case where this is a communicable disease caused by viral infection and most commonly affecting children. So this an inflammation of the cerebral gland usually uh, you find that it usually uh, affect the parotid. So elderly, acute illy or debilitated patients with decreased salivary flow from general dehydration or medication are at high risk and the infecting organism travel from the mouth through the salivary duct. The organism is usually staphylococcus aureus. So the onset of this complication is sudden and exacerbation of both the fever and the symptoms of the primary uh, conditions. The gland swells and become tense and tender. So the patient feels pain in the ear, swollen glands interfere with the swallowing, the, page, the swelling increases rapidly and the overlying skin soon becomes red and shiny. So you can be able to appreciate the parotid, salivary glands, mandibular, and then you have the mounds you can be able to see. If antibiotic therapy is not treated, the gland may be needed to be drained by a surgical <laughs> procedure, and that surgical procedure we refer to it as parot uh, parotidectomy. So this procedure may be necessary to treat this chronic uh, parotitis. Sialadenitis is inflammation of the salivary uh, glands, okay? And uh, this inflammation is normally associated by infection by uh, Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus viridans, and Pneumococcus. In hospitalized or institutionalized patient, find that the infecting organism may be MRS, this is methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Nevertheless, the patient will present with the pain, uh, swelling, prolen discharge, antibiotics may be used to treat, so you need to massage, hydration, and corticosteroid frequently to cure this problem. Chronic cyanitis may be un uh, may be with uncontrolled pain it may be treated with surgical drain of the gland or excision of the gland and its duct salivary calculus that is sialolithiasis okay this is salivary calculi or stones which is actually occur in the submandibular gland okay submandibular gland so the salivary gland ultrasonography or sialography, X-ray studies filmed after injection of the radio opaque substances into the duct may be just be performed to demonstrate obstruction of this duct by stenosis. Salivary calculi may be formed mainly from calcium phosphate. If located within the gland, the calculi are irregular and could vary in diameter between three to thirty millimeters. Okay. Okay, so we have the calculi in the uh, uh, in the duct could be small and oval calculi within salivary and itself with no symptoms unless infection arises. However, you find that a calculi that obstructs glands duct causes sudden uh, local, often colic-like pain, which abruptly is relieved by a gush of saliva. So the cal this characteristic symptom is often disclosed in the patient's health history. So on a physical assessment, the gland is swollen and quite tender and the stone itself can be palpable. Its shadow may be seen on x-ray films. The calculus may be extracted fairly easily from the dust into the mouth. Sometimes enlargement of this duct orifice permits the stone to pass spontaneously. So occasionally we could uh, use this lithotropsy which is just a procedure that uses these shock waves to disintegrate the stones and may be used instead of this surgical extraction of these parotid stones and smaller submandibular stones. So lithotropsy requires no anesthesia, sedation, or analgesia, but side effects could include things like local hemorrhage and swelling. So surgery may be necessary to remove the gland if the symptoms and the calculi uh, recur repeatedly.
Next, you have the neoplasms, and this one you have the neoplasms um, that uh, affect the salivary glands. So they mostly occur in the parotid gland. Okay, and uh, risk factors could include prior exposure to radiation to the head and neck. So in management, we could do partial excision of the gland and uh, we, uh, care must be taken not to injure the seventh cranial nerve. If a tumor is malignant, then we have to use the radiation therapy uh, in that case. Okay, radiation therapy is alone, maybe, of course, a treatment choice for the tumors that are thought to be contained. Or if there is a, um, a, a risk for injuring the facial nerve damage from the surgical operation, then that should be an alternative. Chemotherapy may be used just for palliative purposes. So local recurrences are common and recurrent growth usually is more aggressive than the original. It's also been observed that patients with salivary gland tumors have increased incidence of secondary primary cancers. So we have the cancer of the oral cavity. So cancer of the oral cavity, it occurs in any part of the mouth or the throat and are curable if these are discovered early. This type of cancer, you find that they are associated with the use of alcohol and tobacco. So the combination has been found to be synergistic carcinogenic effect. In about 95% of oral cancer, people in uh, <clears throat> it occurs in people older than 40 years. But in the incidence is increasing in men younger than 30 because of the use of smokeless tobacco, especially the sniff. So cancer of the oral cavity accounts for about 2% of all death cancers. So men are more afflicted uh, than, than, than women. However, uh, the current incidence shows that oral cancer in uh, women is increasing and possibly because of the use of tobacco and alcohol more frequently than they did in the past. So find that if you try to compare the survival rate for this cancer, you find that 55% um, for white, then that 3% for African Americans. So the, of, of the research that have been done, you find that uh, neoplasms of the mouth are normally the topmost, uh, followed by neoplasms um, the pharynx, okay, and the others. So chronic irritation by the warm pestain or prolonged exposure to the sun and wine may predispose a person to a lip cancer. So predisposing factors could include things like tobacco, ingestion of uh, alcohol, deficiency, uh, dietary deficiency, and ingestion of smoked uh, meat. So this malignancy of oral cavity, they are usually squamous cell carcinoma. So in any area of the oropharynx, it can be a site of malignant growth. But the lips, the lateral aspects of the tongue and the flow of the mouth are the most commonly affected. So you bear and uh, the area behind the molar and tongue uh, junction. So many coral cancer produce fewer and uh, no symptoms in early stages. Later, the most um, uh, frequent symptom is painless so or mass that cannot heal. So a typical lesion in the oral cancer is painless and underrated. Okay? So the tissue from any uh, ulcer of the oral cavity does not heal in two weeks and should be examined through biopsy. As this cancer progresses, the patient may complain of tenderness, difficulty in chewing, swallowing, or speaking coughing of blood tinged disputum or enlarged cervical lymph nodes. So a diagnostic evaluation will be consisting of an oral examination as well as examination of the cervical lymph nodes to detect possible metastasis and biopsies may be performed on suspicious lesions. So high risk areas could include the buccal mucosa and the gingiva for people who use uh, sniff or or, uh, or uh, the smoke cigars or pipes. So for those who smoke cigarettes and drink alcohol, high risk areas will include the flow of the mouth, the ventrolateral tongue, and the soft part, the palate complex. 
So management varies with the nature of the lesions and the preference of the physician and the patient choice. Surgical resection, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, or combination of this therapy may be in effective. So in case of the lip, small lesions are usually excised laterally. Larger lesions involving more than a third of the lip may be more appropriate treated by radiation therapy because of the superior cosmetic uh, results. The choice depends on the extent of the lesion and what is necessary to cure the patients while preserving the best appearance. Tumors larger than 4 cm often recur, so cancer of the tongue may be treated with radiation therapy and chemotherapy to preserve organ function and maintain quality of life. A combination of radioactive interstitial implants okay, together with external beam may be used. So if the cancer can be spread or has spread to more than to, to the lymph nodes, the surgeon may perform a neck uh, dissection. Surgical treatments leave less functional uh, tongue. Surgical procedure include the hemiglossectomy, that's the removal of half of the tongue, and total glossectomy, that's removal of the tongue. So Often, cancer of the oral cavity has metastasized through extensive lymphatic channels in the neck. So, the last objective was looking at down the needs, okay, patients with oral cancer, the physical and psychosocial uh, long-term needs that require comprehensive and multidisciplinary care. Find that for physical long-term needs, we will be talking about regular medical follow-up, oral rehabilitation, nutrition support, speech and uh, swallowing therapy, pain management, management of side effects, and dental care. While the psychosocial long-term needs will include the psychological support, body image and self-esteem, social support, employment and financial challenges, sexual health, uh, survivorship programs, and uh, advanced care planning. So the nursing management, we normally say that the nurse should assess the patient's nutritional status preoperatively and also the dietary consultation may be necessary. The patient may require enteral or parenteral feedings before and after surgery to maintain adequate nutrition. If a radial graft is to be performed, an allen test on the donor arm must be performed to ensure that the ulnar artery is patent and can provide blood flow to the hand after removal of the radial artery. The Allen test is performed by asking the patient to make a fist and then manually compressing the ulnar artery. If the, the patient is then asked to open the hand into a relaxed or slightly flexed position, if the palm will be pale, pressure on the ulnar is released. We also have the denture care, and uh, you find that many older patients wear dentures, and uh, mouth care and regular checkups remain part of the denture wearing and of older, uh, older adults promotion activities. So they need to brush the dentures twice a day. They move the dentures at night and soak them in water or in a denture product. Never put the dentures in hot water because they, they warp. You rinse mouth with warm water, warm salty water in the morning and after meals and at night. You need to clean, clean uh, well under partial dangers where food particles tend to get caught. You consume non-sticky foods that have been cut into small pieces, then you chew slowly. See dentist regularly to assess and readjust the fist. Find that the nursing diagnosis for patients with oral health problems could have impaired oral mucous membrane related to pathogenic conditions, infection or chemical or mechanical trauma, e.g. the medication, ill-fitting dangers. Could have imbalanced nutrition less than body requirement related to the ability to ingest adequate nutrients secondary to oral or dental uh, problems. Could also have disturbed body image related to physical change in appearance resulting from the disease or its treatment, fear of pain, 
and uh, social isolation related to disease or change in physical appearance, pain related to oral lesions or treatment, impaired verbal communications and related to treatment, risk for infection related to disease or treatment, or deficient knowledge about the disease process and treatment plan. So these patients, they have to be discharged. So upon discharge, you have to make sure that the patient meets the following goals. So they need to be able to demonstrate uh, the use of suction equipment if indicated. Okay, they need to state the rationale for humidification. They also need to state foods necessary to meet calorie needs and dietary needs. That is the change in consistency, seasoning limitations and supplements. They also need to demonstrate oral hygiene, demonstrate care of the incision and state when next medication or dental follow-up appointment will be scheduled. Others, that's what you're supposed to cover for the management of patients with oral problems. Okay.